Good morning. My name is Erdem. I'm co-founder and CEO of Dunk Republic. We are a bike sharing service headquartered in Copenhagen, Denmark, operating since 2015. Our purpose is to help transform cities to make them more livable by providing sustainable mobility solutions that everyone can afford. So here we are um, operating since 2015. We were actually the pioneers of a low cost bike sharing business model before the offers and more bikes. Um, and we are still the only one in Europe scaling without subsidies, providing uh, bike shares to cities. We have 50 cities in total that we serve. 15 of these are larger than 250,000 people. Many of them have chosen Dunkirk Public exclusive as the bike share operator because of the benefits that we provide. 600,000 riders have ridden donkeys so far, 6 million trips to date, 4 million of those trips were taken by locals, and 2 million of those trips were taken by members who are paying a monthly fee for an unlimited usage. The riders are paying 1 euro in average, and members are paying only 0.4 euros in average for a donkey trip. And that's about 2.2 kilometers and a little bit more than 15, 17 uh, minutes. The members are taking more than 30 trips per month, which means that we have a really good um, service for them. You've seen some of our bikes. This is our pedal bike. We also have launched e-bikes. And what you see up here are our new uh, 2020 models, which are designed um, with an with a award-winning designer. And you're the first ones to see them publicly. <laughs> so, as Haras well put, we are here to try to solve cities' problems. They are about congestion, air quality, public space, but also physical exercise. Cities don't think about mobility as an isolated problem. They look at city and citizens' problems holistically. And I think this is important to remember that we're not only trying to solve one issue while we might create another issue. We have to really think about cities' problems collectively. And I've grown up in Istanbul. Um, it was ranked fifth most uh, congested city, spanning one and a half hours each way to middle school and high school. So I really know what congestion issue means. But also now in Turkey, we are fourth most obese uh, or uh, obesity problem. Uh, so we have to think about the problems collectively. And this is to tell a story about that it's not the individual who can make the right choices for society. It's our governments who can make these choices. This is LA with a bike highway back in 1907. They also had a very complex rail network. The city that had the best bike infrastructure became this. And that's because we left the choice to individuals and to the industries, not to the regulators. And I live now in Copenhagen, very happy with the quality of life, and that's to a high extent due to being able to bike around in a very convenient way. So regulations matter, and not the individuals, but the governments are the stakeholders that can um, represent our collective interest. We mapped out a few of the providers on the left-hand side to see how they map in terms of the social benefits that cities want to create through micromobility. So we've been talking since 2015 to dozens of cities across Europe mainly, and they've named space or controlled parking, affordability, physical exercise, safety, environmental sustainability as their main concerns. And these factors are also included in their permit schemes. So depending on how much these services, these services are able to create those impacts, the cities are expected to issue permits, subsidies, and potentially be fees. And this is how it should be. We should support cities to create those, those impacts. So in Dunkirk Republic, we try to create a system that is affordable, but also have controlled parking. Um, we come from an area where we used to physical stations, and with micromobility spreading, we have a lot of free floats. We don't think that this is OK. We don't think that while our vehicle numbers on the streets will grow five, tenfold where they are today, that, that we should let the vehicles stand wherever they like. So in Dunkirk Republic, we implemented a geofence system where we digitalized all the bike racks in the city and only allow users to drop the bikes there. And we create enough, many of them, so that people find them conveniently and we still have a high usage rate. The other thing that's really important is affordability. We're talking about a lot of people um, and they should be able to get around in the cities. The services should not be for the few, but for the masses. So if you look in Berlin, public transport card is 60 euros per month. A person who should switch from car to, you know, rail plus micromobility to get to their end destination, need to be able to afford it. If you pay 60 euros for your train ticket, you're not going to pay 130 plus euros for your last mile on a scooter, on a jump bike. So at Dunkirk Public, thanks to the pedal bikes, low cost maintenance, 
we are able to provide them at 10 euros and still make money, still make it a sustainable business. There are other benefits as well of bikes. So health is one thing. In Copenhagen, they have studied the health benefits of, of uh, cycling. Physical activity, as I mentioned, is an important public goal. It's gaining the individual who's taking one bike trip, one euro, plus the society another half a euro in future benefits. So your bike ride is essentially free if you think about your future health. Safety, an Austin study has found out that the, the, the scooters are creating 200 accidents per million rides. And in Copenhagen and Denmark, statistics are talking about Danish statistics in one accident per one million bike rides. Environment, four-year lifetime for donkey bikes, four-month lifetime talked about for scooters. And add on top of that the uh, problems with the uh, scooter collection and vans going around all the time. So we try to look at, from city's perspective, how do, how do we do as donkeys? Do we help reaching those public goals? And I'm proud to say we're re really happy that we are getting there and we are creating a, an actual promise to, to solve public issues. And here's a problem I need your attention to. Google is a dominant um, navigation service in Europe, and they have now uh, started nudging people who are getting walking directions to use Lime. And that doesn't really fit with Lime's promise of moving people from cars to using uh, micromobility. That's moving from walking to micromobility. All right, so this is the future that we want to create with Donkey Republic. Thanks for listening in. We are raising another investment round. If you're interested, please get in contact. And that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you.